What's up, Birdie Up? In this video, we're going to be discussing the American Express Championship one and done picks and DFS tournament picks. I'm going to give you a course preview as well as look at what's to be expected weather wise this weekend. Uh, we're going to take you through the last five champions as well as uh, look at last year's top 10 leaderboard. Uh, and then we're going to get into the one and done uh, recap last week's picks and get into this weekend's picks. And finally, give you some DFS tournament picks for your daily fantasy contests. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get into it. So, like I said, uh, we're going to be going over this week's tournament, the American Express tournament, the one and done picks, and the DFS tournament picks. Um, so, first is the course preview. PGA West Stadium course in La Quinta, California, where we actually got to go play. It was a very, very nice course down in the desert. It opened in 1986 and the designer is Pete Dye. Uh, Pete Dye, uh, rest in peace, he just recently passed away, a member of the World Golf Hall of Fame, the famous course designer, uh, receiver of the PGA Tour Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, 93 years young. Um, so it's going to be um, probably a very nice uh, special about him before the tournament, I can imagine, I imagine, I hope so, <clears throat> and these guys are going to go low um, in this tournament. This tournament is interesting because it's actually a celebrity uh, pro-am event, so there's going to be a lot of celebrities who live down in the Southern California desert area who are going to be playing alongside the pros. Uh, with that though, it means that the pace of play is going to be uh, slowed down a lot. Um, this week because of that. The PJ West Stadium course uh, is uh, 7,113 yards. It's a par 72, so we get the typical this week, four par, four, four par threes, 12 par fours, and four par fives, which means that there's going to be more opportunities for birdie or better uh, eagles on the par fives. Um, for these guys and uh, the winning score is going to be a lot lower this week than it was last week. The first and the fourth rounds is actually going to be played at the PGA West Stadium. This tournament features three separate courses uh, all in the vicinity and uh, the second and the third rounds are going to be played at uh, one round at La Quinta Country Club, which uh, is one of the more easier courses where Phil Mickelson shot a 60 in the first round last year, and the PJ West, the Nicholas Stadium, uh, another course. The Because there are three different courses, that means that the cut is going to occur after everyone has played all three courses. Um, so they may not play PJ West on round one and round four uh, might be a, some combination of two or three, one, two, or three, and then the cut is made after 54 holes where the remaining players all play PJ West in round four, the final round. Uh, next, I wanted to get into uh, what the weather forecast is going to be for this week. Uh, in the tournament in La Quinta, California, down in the desert. Um, much better conditions this week uh, compared to last week in Hawaii and the week prior for that matter in Hawaii. Um, it's going to be very good conditions right in the 70s, mid uh, low 70s. And it's going to be a little bit of humidity, uh, humid out there. Um, 
but it's going to shape up to be uh, good conditions. Um, nothing really to concern ourselves with. Not that much wind, less than five miles an hour on any given day. Um, so we should see really good conditions and guys uh, being able to take aim at the flag sticks and be able to score a lot of birdies and uh, some eagles too as well. Especially on um, of the three courses, the second area and the third uh, course are a lot easier. Uh, the PGA West Stadium course is the uh, tougher of the three courses, um, but all three courses, um, there are chances for guys to go low on any given day. Uh, next, I wanted to get into the last five champions uh, here at the uh, what used to be known as the Desert Classic, uh, now the American Express Championship. Is in 2019 last year, Adam Long shot a four-day total of 262 or 26 under par. Currently, 114 in the World Golf Rankings. Um, last weekend, he missed the cut at the Sony Open, um, but he does like easy courses and could have another good showing here. Um, this week. In 2018, John Rahm, the uh, Spaniard, uh, currently third in the official world golf rankings, uh, is actually not in the field this week. A lot of the top golfers are playing over on the European Tour events um, where the purses are uh, larger. Uh, he shot a 40 total of 266 or 22 under par. Uh, next is Hudson Swafford, uh, 2017 winner finished with a four-day total of 268 or 20 under par. Um, currently, uh, Swafford is 434th in the official World Golf Rankings, but he does like uh, putting on some of the similar surfaces, um, Poa and Bermuda Greens. Um, next was Jason Duffner in 2016. He finished with a four-day total of 263 or 25 under par. And Jason Duffner is currently 265th in the world golf rankings. Um, right now though he is not playing too well as he has a string of five straight missed cuts. And lastly was Bill Haas in 2015 uh, finished with a four-day total of 266 or 22 under par. Currently 473rd in the world golf rankings. Next, I wanted to look at the top 10 leaderboard from last year's tournament. Uh, already mentioned Adam Long, how he was able to shoot a final round uh, 65, 7 under par to outduel Phil Mickelson and come back uh, to win this tournament last year by one stroke. Um, next is Phil. Um, this is going to be his first start of the season. And. Uh, he is actually hosting this uh, golf tournament this week. So he will have to be doing a little bit of extra things as the host, uh, which might take up a little bit more time and focus. Um, but I think that he's actually going to do pretty well. And um, he's currently sitting at 79 in the World Golf Rankings as he hasn't played um, any tournaments this year. Um, and. He, he really, really likes the course setup, the Bermuda and the Poa Greens that are offered here this weekend. Uh, next is Adam Hadwin, Canadian, uh, currently 49th in the official World Golf Rankings, but he is actually not in the field this week. He also almost was able to overtake Phil. Uh, they would have had a playoff if Adam Long didn't make his birdie putt on 18 uh, in last year's tournament. Next is Taylor Gooch. Um, Taylor Gooch, he is currently 216th in the World Golf Rankings, and he is actually playing pretty good recently. He has a string of six made cuts in a row. Um, next is Dominic Bazzelli, currently 449th in the World Golf Rankings. He is also not going to be in the field this week. Um, John Rahm, already mentioned him. Vaughn Taylor, currently 98th in the World Golf Rankings, did really well at uh, last weekend's tournament, the Sony Open, finished uh, tied for 12th. Uh, next was JT Poston. Uh, he, uh, many people were high on him last week after his 
uh, good finish at the Tournament of Champions. Uh, he is coming into the tournament uh, 67th in the World Golf Rankings. The Wyndham winner um, had a miscut, though, last week, which burned everybody who used him. Uh, next is Sean O'Hare, currently 655th in the World Golf Rankings. Not going to be in the field this week. Uh, and then rounding it out, Michael Thompson, uh, currently 204th in the World Golf Rankings. Um, he is pretty much exclusively a Bermuda and a POA putter, so uh, expect him to potentially do well this week. And lastly, Patrick Cantlay, officially 6th in the World Golf Ranking currently, is also going to be joining John Rahm, not playing in the field into the tournament this week. So just to kind of sum up the top 10 leaderboard here, um, top uh, two top golfers, in the top 10 in the world that is, um, feature, are featured on this uh, leaderboard, and then many um, other names uh, from kind of all over the place are also um, featured here. The uh, winning score was uh, 2600 par and um, you're going to have to shoot um, a 63 in a day or lower. Uh, Phil Mickelson shot the 60 in the first round and then just couldn't hang on uh, to the lead by the end of the day, by the end of the tournament. And um, it's going to be interesting because nobody's going to be out of it uh, until it's going to be all said and done on 18. So uh, really make for um, high drama, uh, good golf. Uh, next, um, now that we've gone through the course preview and we've also given you the past champions and uh, uh, taken a look at the top 10 leaderboard, I wanted to go through the one and done. Uh, I'm going to recap uh, last week's picks, how I did, and then also get into this weekend's picks. So. My selection for the Sony Open was Colin Morikawa. He was actually a very popular pick, the highest owned golfer. Um, in the one and done, um, like survival, you don't necessarily, um, yeah, for football, you don't necessarily have to choose the most contrarian uh, because it is an entire season long. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're not getting any zeros, missed cuts, you're making money. Um, obviously, the higher you finish, the better it is. Um, but there's still a long way to go and um, like for example guys who picked some of the top golfers in the world who were in the field last week and then missed the cut like Patrick Reed or Justin Thomas now they're gonna have to get a little bit more creative as the season goes along in deciding who they're gonna have to use for another top tournament with a bigger purse um, Colin Morikawa did do well he was doing really really well I think he was like first round leader but on um, Sunday, he three putted 18 and uh, dropped a few shots uh, throughout the round and finished, uh, dropped 17 spots from fourth, I think it was, entering the final round to tie for 21st. But he banked us $64,350 and we're currently tied for 778th out of the 2,829 plus or minus uh, if I missed a few. So we're currently sitting in the 27.5 five percentile right now in the tournament. Uh, so now we're going to move into our picks for this week. Uh, this is now tournament two out of 36, still in segment one of four. The keys to success this week, uh, given the course uh, and the tournament, is going to be what we can do on the par fives. So if we can get some eagles, uh, that's going to be great to vault us up and um, if we can consistently birdie the par fives. Uh, we're also going to be looking at birdie or better percentage, a uh, similar statistic, and we carry over from last week's tournament same strategy that we want to focus on guys who excel in their second shots or strokes gains approached and those who are Bermuda putters and those who have shown always recent form, good recent form. Sungjae Im is going to be our alternate selection this week. Uh, he grades out really, really well on 
a lot of the different uh, metrics for the course fit this week. Um, the South Korean is currently 35th in the world golf rankings, uh, excels on Bermuda and Poa Greens. Um, he does also like easy courses, which these are. And then last season, he finished uh, tied for 12th in this tournament. Um, if anything were to happen to our main selection, then Sung J.M. would be kicking in for us as our alternate. Um, I believe he's going to be really popular this week um, for a lot of people. So we're going to hopefully go with a, a little bit more of a contrarian um, strategy this week. Um, uh, keep pivoting, keep pivoting down and down until hopefully um, we can really vault up again uh, by the rest of the field. Um, also, Sung J.M., I would like to keep him in my back pocket as there's still a long way to go. Maybe I can play him at a major also. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but um, he will be, I believe, a very popular pick and a really good pick for people. I think he's going to do well. So, given that Sung JM is going to be our alternate, that means that we are going to have to go with somebody else. And that person is going to be... Matthew Wolf. Uh, Matthew Wolf, currently 102 in the World Golf Rankings, um, also really uh, excels putting at putting on Bermuda and Poa Greens. The 3M champion um, from last season, and uh, he also finished 11th at the Tournament of Champions. So I believe Matthew Wolf, um, another young gun on tour, uh, someone who played at the, who's already played in the last two weeks. He took last week off and is going to be ready to have a good uh, finish in this weekend's tournament. So Matthew Wolf is going to be our main selection and Sung J.M. will be our alternate selection. Now we wanted to move on to the DFS tournament picks. I wanted to give you guys uh, three picks. Um, just like last week, um, who I believe are going to be overlooked in the mid range, and for some other for some odd reason, and hope that they obviously have a great finish, uh, but that they will be lower owned, and it will allow us to pass up a lot of uh, our other competitors. Uh, last week's DFS tournament picks, uh, Matt Kuchar, unfortunately missed the cut. Um, I think he only missed by one stroke. Um, that was unfortunate for us, but we also, um, but then we got the other two golfers through the cut, Andrew Putnam and Kevin Kisner, with Kevin Kisner actually finishing in the top 10. Um, so it was a good week overall. The strategy is to get six out of six of the golfers through the cut, if possible. We got two out of three. Or 67 percent we're going to try to get all three of them through the cut this weekend <clears throat> so the first dfs tournament pick is charles howell iii um, his projected ownership this week is 10.10 percent .10 and his price is 10.1k and he's currently going off at 30 to 1 odds uh, currently uh, sitting at 57, 57th in the World Golf Rankings, he finished tied for 12th last week at the Sony Open and finished 34th last year in the Desert Classic in the American Express. The second DFS tournament pick is going to be Brendan Todd. Currently he is 58th in the World Golf Rankings. Um, he won back-to-back tournaments in the fall season at the Bermuda and the Mayakoba Classic. He is projected to be owned in only 5.90% and it sits at 8.8k and his odds are 50 to 1 to win this tournament. And lastly, Phil Mickelson. Uh, Phil uh, projected ownership is only at 6.20% owned 
uh, probably given that he um, didn't play too well um, last season um, in some people's eyes. Um, his price is 8.7k and his odds of winning are 40 to 1. Um, he is actually going to be hosting the event. Um, the 44-time PGA Tour winner, the five-time major winner, um, I believe is going to go overlooked. And given that it's a second shot course with uh, wedges from 100 yards and in uh, and some creative bunker play, I believe that Phil Mickelson, if he can keep it straight off the tee, will be a really good tournament pick. So Charles Howell III, Brendan Todd, and Phil Mickelson are our three tournament DFS tournament picks. All right, you guys, so that's, that's going to do it for this video. Um, the American Express Championship uh, in La Quinta, California, the one and done picks and the DFS tournament picks. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share it with your friends so we can reach more golf fans out there. If you think that they might find it interesting, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment down below. If you agree with our picks, comment down below uh, who you think are some good uh, DFS tournament picks and who you are playing in the one and done if you like. And uh, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Birdie up.